The West Ferris Trojans and the St. Joseph Scholard Hall Bears have punched their tickets to the NDA Senior Boys Football Final. In the semis, they defeated their opponents by more than 40 points in shutout victories. And for the second straight year, these two teams battle it out for the NDA Football Championship. Will the Trojans repeat, or will the favored Bears come out on top? Find out as the NDA Senior Boys Football Championship on TV Kojiko begins now. Welcome to the NDA Senior Football Senior Championship football game here at St. Joe's Scholar Bears and the West Ferris Trojans of Vince Calachuri with Ryan McGowan this season in the broadcast booth. Ryan, uh, the two formidable high school teams meet again. 36 championships out of 48. Uh, that's unbelievable for two high schools. Yeah, that's that's just fantastic. It just goes to tell you how good both programs are, great coaching staffs, good feeder teams. It starts in junior. If you've got strong junior teams, you're going to have strong, uh, strong senior teams. So just two great programs going head-to-head -head here. You uh, coached with the Wild and with the Wildcats. Uh, give us perspective of the West Ferris game uh, we might see here today. Well, it, it's real interesting on both sides. I mean, both teams really earned their spot to be here, just dominating in the, in the semifinals. Both teams shut out the semifinal opponents. Both teams put up over 40 points. So it'll be interesting to see if it's the defenses that dominate today or if it's the offenses. Yeah, and the Bears, uh, the game I saw last week in the semifinals, just all over, uh, of course, the, uh, the Wildcats and uh, Jeremy Poeta and Spencer Brooks. Spencer Brooks, who has something to prove, not missing last year's championship, scoring four touchdowns in the second quarter last week. Uh, Spencer's just unreal. The speed, the agility that he brings to the game. Um, I read a quote in the paper and haven't talked with him personally. He just said that he definitely has something to prove and, and he just wants to you know, show what he can do, not only in track, but on the football field as well. He's a great athlete. And of course, Larry Tugas wants to uh, settle the quarterback situation, going with uh, Jake, his son, Jake Tugas. And uh, here, last three games, is that going to make a difference uh, in the offensive strategy? Um, I think so. I think overall, it's just going to make a, a difference with the um, with, with the team by moving Jake to quarterback. I think it gives him a, a better shot at having the uh, is it Moore? Yes, Moore at, uh, at a little more defense and also a threat coming out of, uh, out of the tight end position. Bears and the Trojans, John McDonald's a referee. He's will be mic'd up, and we're going to listen to center field for the introductions and the uh, coin toss. So let's listen to John. Good job. To John McDonald now. Gentlemen, congratulations on uh, getting here, and uh, we're going to have a good football game. The weather has held off for us. Thank you very much. So, Green, you are visitor. Gold, you are home. Green, you're going to get the option. Let me just go through your officials for you today. We've got Mr. Goodall, Mr. Jackson, Mr. McLaren, Mr. Conrad, and Mr. Sweeney, and my name's McDonald. Any questions, guys, ask us. We'll help you through it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Green, you're going to choose now or choose the half? We'll defer. They're going to defer gold. Would you like to receive, kick, or defend an end? Receive. You're chosen to receive. Which end are you going to kick from, Green? Over. Could we switch it up then, please? Thank you. Okay, guys. Let's have a good football game, and come on out, let's play ball. All right, there is John McDonald, ladies and gentlemen, the head uh, crew man here, a veteran of NDA uh, high school football and football in general, along with Terry Jackson, Chris Goodall, Paul Sweeney, Lefty Conrad, and Adam McLaren are the officials, and uh, they give up all their time, even though it's a paid position, but they're everywhere all season long. As you know, Ryan, with the Wild, they're busy almost 24-7 uh, football here in North Bay. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a football family in North Bay, whether it's the junior football, the, the men's league uh, Bulldogs, or our high school football. These guys get a lot of work in, and they, they definitely get, dedicate get a lot of time to it. All right, uh, we heard uh, Johnny uh, McDonald, uh, West Ferris, we'll... Uh, <laughs> Kick the ball. Scholar will receive here in the uh, opening quarter on a, a cool, damp day. We had a little bit of rain, uh, mixed precipitation, but it seems like it's going to settle down. We hope this afternoon is jam-packed at the Elma Show Field. First time ever. This is a history-making event, Ryan. You're glad you're here. Matt's not. Matt Gordon, we thanked him very much. He had some last-minute changes in his schedule, so we appreciate Matt's participation throughout the year. Of course, last year we had a barn burner here, Ryan, 28-24, with a great comeback. So let's hope this one goes right to the end as well. Yeah, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Two very strong teams, two great defenses, two amazing offenses. It should be a heck of a match. And it's the first time uh, on uh, television camera on Kojiko with the colors on the field, the lines, it's unbelievable. This is what it should be, should have been a long time ago. We're happy that 
the council has finally done this and we can go on with the amenities that's needed desperately my add my own opinion on this that uh, next year at this time we can have a press box and facilities upgraded and that uh, would be a, just a lot better for us in general but we'll take it for tonight and uh, everybody's cooperated great today uh, ryan and uh, it's a multi-broadcast with radio and of course television here today so that's that's a big event this is in north bay it's grown that big yeah, the facilities are absolutely gorgeous. I was saying earlier, it doesn't feel climate-wise like a like a North Bay final game. Yeah. There's, there's no mud. There's yeah. no uh, there's no snow on the field. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that makes a big difference, right? It sure does. All right, we're ready to go for the uh, kickoff. Anthony Scapatura, number four for uh, West Ferris. Oh, the short kickoff, right to the the Bears up lineman. That's number 64, Tyson Hummel. And there's a flag on the play. Could be an offside as they mark the ball at the Bears 50, but it might be a re-kick here, right? Yeah, good chance of that. It looked like the, the kicker had a little stumble going towards the ball. I'm not sure what he did, and uh, it put the rest of his let's, coverage team offside. Let's try and listen to John McDonald here on the call. We have procedure green on the kick, declined. Yeah, procedure green kick. All right, there's a call from John McDonald. Uh, Scarlett will take the ball. A, a great field position at the 50-yard line, first and 10, as we get started here in this championship final. Quarterback is Eric Rayner, number two. The uh, running backs are 20, uh, Jordan Bordenland, 34 is Andrew Bedard. Your split ends at Brooks and Poeta. And you'll see lots of those numbers and names being repeated throughout this afternoon. I slip it into Bedard, 34, gets five, gets 10, gets about 12. He's still going, finally knocked down by the West Ferris Trojans player number 23. That's Thomas Hamilton. A good run off the plate. Yeah, what a great run. And when you have two slop bats who are so dangerous like these two guys are, it's just going to open up the game for the tailback, as you can see right there. So for, uh, I think it's a battle of possession here, Ryan. I think it's a last ball wins, and I think the defenses are going to get tested. They're going to give up points. They know that. It's a matter of how many and uh, how many off, how many chances do they have. Yeah, every every stop is going to be key in this game, I think. First and 10 for the Bears inside West Ferris territory, but the 48 gives it Andrew Bedard again. Another big hole, and he gets close to another first down as they move the chains here again. So there's another pickup, and the Bears are moving quickly here in this opening quarter. Well, we've seen Spencer twice now go in motion to the left, and because he's so dangerous, you see the defense overcompensating, and that's opening up just straight leads to the backside. And, and you think they use their to advantage, right? Just uh, with Brooks and Poada, they've got to be decoys the majority until they have to go to them, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Out of first and 10, at about the 38-yard line for the Bears. No score, early first quarter action. Again, inside the boat line, number 20. Good pickup again for the Bears, and they're making it look easy so far. They mark it around the 30-yard line. Something else to take into account, you talk about the speed and, and the, the weapons that they have with these, these running backs and slot backs, but that O-line for Scarlett is huge. They're <laughs> big boys, and they can get a surge on the D-line. Yeah, that's uh, they, if they're going to dominate the, uh, the offensive line, this is what they're going to do. Second down and short, about two yards or so. Long count by Rayner. He tosses it up to uh, Brooks. Gets around the corner. And he's hauled down, but should get the first down inside the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Bears. And if you're new to high school football, it's three downs now in uh, Canadian college and in high school. They changed that a few years back. Ryan, uh, that was a good move, I thought, going from four to three downs just to get used to the Canadian uh, college system. No doubt, no doubt at all. Um, if any of these, these players are going to have a real legitimate shot at playing at the next level, they're more than likely going to be Canadian, so get used to the Canadian rules now. That's it. First and 10 for the Bears. I got a split, split ends on the far out. Wow. See if that passes situation or not. Nope. Big inside to Bernard. Has a gaping hole again. He's carrying guys on the back. Six or seven guys. Close to about the 18 yard line. And uh, let's see how the pickup. They mark him uh, about six yards or so. Second down. But they're really doing a lot of different moves, aren't they? Uh, as a coach, you can explain a lot, a lot of detail and uh, the wideouts, just sp spreading out the defense, making them think uh, different to philosophies because, you know, they can see all the tape they want. That's not going to be the same game plan. Yeah, here it is again. They've got an offset line, so there's uh, there's no tackle on the left side. It's a guard, and then they got an extra lineman to the right. Uh oh, followed by Rain or by Poeta, or make that Brooks, I'm sorry, number nine. And is he get enough? He should have close enough there. 
Maybe not. Yes, they do. They mark it in there. We're in a bad angle here, so we're going to be guessing a lot. But I know it looks good on TV <laughs> because sure the does. guys are above us and we're below, so we're going to be guessing on the yard markers. But we can we know when they score. That's the important part. And that's another little wrinkle too, where they're they're having Spencer Brooks take the snap at quarterback. Okay. Yeah. A little different format. Bowden number 20 has a gaping hole. One more to beat. He's in for the touchdown. The Bears, Ernie Marks, Jordan Bowden makes it 6 0. Okay. Scholard almost makes it look effortless. Yeah. The way they can move the ball. And again, that just goes back to an amazing surge by the by the O line there. Anytime the fullback can get that far downfield untouched, you know your O lineman is doing a really good job. Yeah, it, it really was pretty easy, but uh, that's still early. Here we go for the extra point. Jordy Ortepi will try to convert it, and he does. Seven nothing Bears. 8:08 left in the first quarter. So West Ferris now. Gets the ball back after about uh, four minutes of ball control of Scholar, and uh, see what Jake Tugas can do on uh, on this because it's important. They have to match really. They, they can't afford to give up the ball too many times. Well, that's just yeah. Like I just said earlier, there every stop is going to be crucial because I think both offenses are going to be able to move the ball really, really well. So each individual stop is is going to is going to count for something throughout the, the length of the game. Seven nothing Bears. 8:08 left in the first quarter. NDA Senior Football Championship. TV coach go Vince Calaturi, Ryan McGowan with you. And the winner of this game will host the SNASA semifinal next Saturday here at the complex, and against the Sudbury High School team. And someone told me earlier, and I'm not sure. I think it's St. Benedict's. Is that possible? Someone told me earlier. We'll find out for sure uh, during the halftime break. And then if they win that, if the local team wins that, then they host NASA the following Saturday against Sault Ste. Marie, which would be exciting ball. Hopefully TV Kojigo will be there in the next couple of Saturdays. If possible, we'll be here to cover it for you. Here goes the kickoff for Tepe for the Bears after the touchdown. It's going to drop around the 20-yard line. And the Trojans, that's DaCosta, 22. And he gets over the 35 to about the 38-yard line. And that's where the uh, Trojans offense will start. Jake Tukas, number 10, takes over from Alex Mason and the quarterback with three games remaining. And uh, that's turned their tie. They were four and two during the regular season. And the blowout of, uh, of Algonquin last week as well, 41 nothing. And we'll see what Jake can do his last year at West Ferris and possible last year for his dad, Larry. A lot of rumblings of uh, Larry trying to move on, getting some university programs going. Uh, we could talk about that. Uh, we have a break or two, see if that's going to happen or not. But we'll see what happens here in reality. First handoff to Austin Gravel, number 34, is your running back for the Trojans. Picks up a few. Yeah, I expect to see a lot of handoffs to Tyler or to uh, Austin Gravel today. Yeah, it's easy to make that mistake with Tyler. I don't know. Lots, lots of those Gravels. Well, I, coached, I coached Tyler <laughs> for, for a season at Whitfield. So as soon as I hear Gravel, I yeah. just automatically picture Tyler. Second down, about five. There is seven minutes, 20 seconds left. Seven nothing Bears. Again, Gravel. And he gets past 45. He's going to be short, I believe, by yard or two. Let's see who gets up on the tackling. Zachary Clark, 71, part of the uh, tacklers. Third down. Your early gamble here, Ryan. What do you think? Third about two. Third and two. Well, it's going to come down to the line usually when it's this close. They're going to go for it. Yeah, it looks like they are. Oh, now this could be this is something they've done. Yeah. Uh, Mason's going to kick it as well. There it is on third down, the quick Let's kick. Scholar got caught off guard as it bounces all the way down to about the 10-yard line. And still going. Picked up by Kukulo. There's a flag on the play. Probably a no yards. We'll see what happens here. But uh, as we said, got earlier, Chris. Alex Mason, uh, he's a uh, tight end kicker That's and quarterback, and that third down got scholar off guard. Let's see what the flag is yep. here. Yeah. Green captain. We have your captain. Yeah. Illegal block on goal. We're going to the six. It'll be a first down there. Okay, thank you. Illegal block. Goal. First down, goal. There's your call from John McDonald. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big one uh, penalty to get back uh, to Barry's own territory, down about the five yard line. They're gonna have a long way to go now. Yeah, 6.40 uh, left in the first, seven nothing Bears. Second possession for the Bears offense. Eric Arena, number two, the quarterback, is overshadowed by these great running backs. Brooks trying to go outside, he's hammered down. Nice tackle 
by 14, Nick Vesna. That was a great read by the defense there. Yeah, that cornerback just did a fabulous job of shedding his block and making the tackle in open field. And for a big loss, too, we've got Scholar now backed up right on their own goal line. Yeah, that's uh, what kind of a second down play do you call here, Coach? Whoa, this is tough. I mean, when you're, when you're looking at this long, you want to go to the air, but anything in your own end zone that takes time to develop, you're, you're looking at giving up a safety, and that's something you don't want to do. So you have to come up with a decision. Oh, there was a flag. I didn't, we, didn't, we missed that. We're sorry about that. Is he going to call it? No, we'll pick it up here. No, we didn't get it on, but Chris, it came from the crowd. Good job, boys. Probably seven. Come on, Green, hold him. Second down. Oh, wow, that's a big penalty yeah. there. I'm not, uh, I don't think from Larry Tugas going to be happy about that. No. Guy. So, there's a conduct penalty against the Trojans, so that's a first down, or second down, pardon me. They flip it inside. Again, Andrew Bernard. Close to the first down marker. This to do get it. That's a costly penalty. I wonder. I mean, you gotta use your brain for that one. That's a tough call. You sure did. We didn't get a number or no. call really. And I thought I heard the referee saying that it came from the sideline. Oh, so wow. Hard to say what yeah. happened there. Yeah. That could be a bench call too, it, right? It very well so could be. We uh, he did not give the number, so it usually come from the bench. So that's a big first down with a big penalty for the Bears here in the opening quarter. Five and a half to go. Still a seven nothing lead. Again, a lot of motion. They give it inside. Now they toss it to uh, Poeta. Jeremy Poeta dances away, but not too far. He's uh, tackled there by 64, Braden Stevenson of the Trojans. Yeah, so, just going back to that penalty yep. real quickly. One of the things they really cracked down on in, in high school football is, is language, whether it be on the field or the sidelines coming from the bench. That's something that the referees won't have, and, uh, and they're quick to throw a flag on that, and rightfully so. So second down, they lost a few yards on a play. Second about 12 as they mark it down. Let's see, around the 14-15 uh, yard line. And we'll see what the Rainer and the Bears come up here on this uh, second down play again. Back to pass, swing, looking deep. The receiver's open, he's got it. Oh, he dropped the ball. Can you believe that? Michael right. Carr had it for six. Wow, that's a turning point right there. Oh, it sure is. He's, he's past the, the defender there. He's in behind him, and it's right off the hands. <laughs> wow, who's on the defense there? Uh, Zach DeLoma looked like he was able to sneak in behind him. Uh, mark that point down. Yeah. That could be a turning point there because that would have been, that would have deflated West Ferris, I thought, it would, for sure. Now you get a third down and punting situation and a good field position off the punt. Uh, I believe uh, Rainer's going to kick it. Number two, he's back there. No trickery here, I don't think, on third down. That'd be a brave call. Yeah, that'd be a very brave call. Lots of time. Uh, terrible kick, actually. Oh, got a bounce. Oh, no flags down. Hanniger, number 86. He's knocked down, but there'll be a no yards here against the Bears, and West Ferris will have the ball in a great position. Yeah, real nice tackle by Dan Dion. One of the things that um, Scholar tries to do here is that shield punt, where they spread out all of the linemen. They're on the line, but they're really not there for, for, for blocking purposes. They, the chance is that the, the center's gonna get a good snap, the kicker's gonna get the ball off, they just leave three guys back to give them the time to do that, and then the rest of the linemen are now downfield quick enough to try and make a tackle. The problem is you see quite often, no they're yards. downfield too quick, and they end up giving First up the no beat. yards penalties. Here's a, here's a call from John McDonald, our referee. No yards on goal, first down green. So that's a big 15 yard penalty, first and 10 for the uh, Trojans. And around the 32 yard line. So they're still trailing seven nothing here in the first quarter. 4.15 left. Jake Tukas is the quarterback. They swing in a motion to Austin Gravel, trying to string it out. Carter Carlin right there, forces back inside. And a very short game, but good job by 55 Carlin. Absolutely, and here's West Ferris now doing their own little bit of trickery with an offset line again. On, flipping Green, the tackle over go. to the left side, the going with offset Green, to the left. Court. But uh, Conlon there didn't make the actual tackle, but he definitely he made the play yeah, yeah. by forcing him back to where all of his help is. So a big play, second down about nine, gain about a yard, will be uh, generous on that call. That is second down call for the uh, Tugas and the offense. Joey Davis wide, now inside, fake it, pass, has a man wide open in the end zone, waiting for the ball, touchdown, Ferris! Right 
shortstop but it might be called back. You can imagine if he was offside in that play. Oh, it's, this will be a back, backbreaker for Ferris if that's the case. And they're talking to goal yeah. captain. Oh, it's coming back. Wow. Let's hear the call. Make a procedure. Did you get the number? I didn't know nope. right here. Procedure. Green. Second down is it. No number. No number. You oh, just say that's, green. Yeah. That's a tough one. Well, that almost makes up for the drop that Scholar had right. on their oh, last drive. Skylar Hanniger, number 86, was wide open. And uh, another turning point in the game. Second down, about 15 now. Just make sure the ball is placed at the right, right line. Yeah, I really like what West Ferris is doing here. They use their tight ends very, very wisely. They, they put them on the line, and that allows the receivers to get a running start. Quite often you see with the four wide receivers, you have the receivers on the line, slot pass get the running start. Now the corners are going to have to defend a running start by, uh, by the two wide ends. Second down and long again for the Trojans. That's a big penalty call. We'll see how they react here offensively. Back to pass Dugas. Hanniger's 86 inside slot to 23. That was Hamilton off the fingertips. A little bit high, a little bit high of a pass, but that's the right read. There's no safety over the middle there, so it's a good spot for the ball to go. So third down. And this is a weapon that West Ferris has now with that quarterback punter as the same player. Yes. Doesn't allow Scholar to set up a return team. Alex Mason, number seven, can do a lot of things from that position, as you just mentioned, Ryan. And he kicks out of bounds. And we'll see where they mark it. Um, would you call that a productive offensive for West first for confidence because of the penalty they, they think they can score and trickery could uh, could work in this game yeah knowing you can get the en get in the end zone even if you don't come up with the points because of a penalty knowing that you can move the ball definitely will give them, give them some confidence for sure so penalties really have hurt West first one here for the defensively and here offensively too definitely definitely uh, so far that's you know in any sport you got to stay out of the uh, penalty box in hockey and uh, the plays here in football the same thing just to turn the momentum the Bears have the ball again, and they're still up by 7 nothing. It's 2.50 left in the first quarter. This is the NDA Senior Football Championship at the Steve Omichel Complex History B making here for the first time on TV Kojiko. First broadcast of the complex. There's the first run. Uh, first handoff to Spencer Brooks. Been split in quite a bit with Poeta. And uh, so far, they're quietly bringing uh, Brooks and Poeta into the uh, system. Right now, it's either... Baudouin or Bedard inside. Yeah, and, and they're getting pretty good production out of those two guys right there. Great tackle by uh, Braden Stevenson on that last play. Second down. It's call about six. Again, inside, look at the move. Not quite. Do they make it or not? No, I think it's going to be short. Wow. Third down as the ball moves up to about the 25 yard line. Going to be about a yard short here. I don't see the button team coming out. <laughs> well, Rainer is kicking too, so that's another, uh, as Mason's doing for West Ferris, he can kick it. Uh, I'm sure they can do all positions, as you all know in high school. You, can, you might as well play everything. Yeah, and here's uh, you know. Thomas Hamilton. He's backing up to see if it yep. is kicked or not. Now he's moving back up again. So it might be a direct snap here, right? Po or Spencer Brooks, is he going to get it or not? He's got to lean forward. He might get it. He gets it. Good hustle and good extra effort yeah, by Spencer Brooks because he was going backwards. He just leaned across to get that one yard, and that's a big first down. Yeah, it was definitely the second effort that helped him get it there at the end. Wow. You see the defense running out. They weren't sure if they <laughs> got it or Good not. confidence building there, you guys. <laughs> defense was about halfway out on the field, and they had to turn around and go back. <laughs> first and 10 uh, for the Bears at the 26-yard line. In the late stages of the first quarter, a minute left to go, 7 0 Bears in this final NDA game. Again, Rayner inside, and Bedard is hammered for the ball yard, yard pickup. Nice play in the inside by that Trojans line. Yeah, one thing that I've noticed in the four years that I've been coaching and been a part of high school football here in North Bay is the Trojans don't miss many tackles. They have some fantastic tackling on that defense. 
And that's a very important uh, word and process, kids to learn how to tackle, right? Uh, without question. Here we go, second and about nine. To uh, Bernard, he gets crossed to 32. Gonna be short, the third down punting situation. With uh, 14 seconds left in the first quarter and the seven nothing bearer lead. Mark at about 32 and a half yard line and uh, turn over the ball and we'll change ends. I don't know why the clock stopped, but that's wind up. There it goes. Okay, Rainer's going to kick it. He's another multitasking uh, high school football player at North Bay. He sure is. So you should have to be careful of everything, right? There we go. That's time. Much better kick this time. Still angles it. And pops out the 45. And he's out around the 50. Or they're going to mark it at 48. But no time left on the clock. And that will be the score after one quarter is 7-0. Trojan. That's something I've noticed now with uh, with both punters, Mason as well as Scholar's punter there, that uh, both of them are angling it out of bounds. A lot of respect for both return men. Does that tell you? It tells you a lot, right? Sure it's, does. It's, it sure uh, does. They want no game breakers here at all. So I, I thought it was a team first quarter. I expected more fireworks, but we did get fireworks. Just the penalties have held back or turnovers. Sure has, and, and drop balls. Yes, yeah, that's true too. And. Uh, so if we're expecting a 40 nothing game, wrong. We're not going to get that. I, it's going to be a lot closer than I think people might think here because I think the defenses are putting some pressure on themselves to show, hey, the offenses can't get away with those 40-point games anymore. Definitely. So the uh, Trojans take over as you start the second quarter. Jake Tugas, his own 48-yard line, fakes a Gravel, back to pass. as a man open down the seam. And a bit too far off the fingertips of Joey Davis. And the fans are unhappy about that one. Uh, late hit after the play, but no call there. What do you think? Well, once the ball's tipped, it's fair game. Yeah. Though. Once it hits the ground, that's another story. That's another story, right, yeah. The people understand that is if you touch the ball, you're, you're allowed to get contact, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You never know as a defensive back if the ball gets tipped, if it's tipped back up in the air, it's fair game. Anybody's uh, able to pick that up or, or pick it off and keep going. So. I always teach my guys when I'm teaching DBs, once that ball's tipped, put someone on the ground. Don't let them chance, give them a chance to catch it. Second down, shotgun formation for uh, Tugas and the Trojans. Here comes a four-man rush, maybe a screen. They have a screen pass set up to Mason. And he rolls in there. Let's see where they mark it. He's going to be short, maybe. Let's see the right foot, left foot mark. No, oh, that's going to be a tough one. I think they're going to be short by yard. Yeah, less than a yard. So it'll be third down. They'll be going with uh, Alex Mason, number seven, off the snap. And he pulls over for the first down for the Trojans. And there you start seeing Mason as a, as a real threat because yeah. now the, the, the Bears don't know, is he going to back up and punt this or is yeah. he going to snap it and run with it? He can hand it off or he can pass it. That's right, yeah. First and ten. That's about the 48 of the Bears. Still 7 nothing lead here in the uh, second quarter. And a decent crowd, jam-packed here, as packed it can get for the first time at this uh, complex. Across the way, up of the rock cliff. But Gravel gets the toss. Goes inside, keeps going, second, third effort. And he stumbles close to another first down. Gravel was unbelievable in that game last week as well. Yeah, he really ripped off some huge runs last week. I'd love to talk to Coach Ferreira after the game and find out if that's designed. It's a it's a pitch to the left, and as soon as he had it in his hands, he immediately cut back to the right. So it'll be interesting to know if that's designed or if he just saw a crease in the backside and, it, and decided to attack it himself. Second down and two at the 40. Trojans looking to tie this game at seven. Tugas back to pass, swings out to the far side. It's incomplete. Don't know, getting out of the hands of Colin Track, number 29. As we were talking to uh, Jason uh, Ferreira before the game there, Ryan, we saw that uh, playboard, unbelievable. Yeah. you understand that, Colors? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I, I use a little bit of that with the Nipissing Wild when I'm coaching the offense. Yep. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury in, in the OFC to use radios. So oh, I see. everything yep. has to be called in either with words or with, uh, or with hand boards or, or hand signals of some kind. So it's nice to be able to go with uh, such a, a vast playbook. 
Yeah, I see a lot of people don't know that is you can use radios in some leagues and some don't allow, right? Absolutely. Carvel again, he's dancing today. Another great game for another first down as they go inside the 30 at the 29. Yeah, that's a really good, again, play calling by Jay Ferreira. Uh, he went for the play action pass on second and two, knowing that the defense would be stacked up against the run and then having the confidence to say, hey, it's third down and two, we can just run for it there. So he takes a shot on second down, knowing that he's going to go for it on third. 8.45 and counting, 7 nothing Bears, and the Trojans on the march here to tie this game up. First and 10 inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Inside handoff, and there was a whistle blowing track 29. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what Johnny McDonald, our head ref, will tell us. Uh, we uh, go back five, and it'll still be first down. So, okay, thank you. Take, take it back, Jay. Procedure, green, still one. Procedure, green, still one. So again, penalties, Ryan, costing the Trojans march here, and I think they have to get rid of that uh, if they're gonna win this game at all. Yeah, definitely, both teams are gonna have to, to clean it up a little bit. So, first and 15, they move back, about the 34-yard line, back to pass Dugas again, there comes a rush, go inside, has a man open in the corner, he dropped it, oh my goodness. Jody Davis, Joey Davis, pardon me, had a great chance and a couple of drop balls here. Is it nerves here this afternoon or what? It, it could be. It could be cold hands. I see yep. a lot of these kids are wearing gloves. I've got gloves on myself to try and keep the hands a little warm, help with a little stick. Uh, again, a play action pass. The yep. DBs are, are biting so hard on the run, it's letting the Ferris receivers get in behind them yep. and drop passes are killing them. It would be interesting to see if they continue to call passing plays if the receivers are going to be dropping balls like that. Yeah. Here we go, second down. And again, is it, is it caught? Yes, it is, on the angle. And let's see who made that, 86. That's uh, Hanniger made a catch. And let's see what they mark it for yardage. It's going to be third down. Third down, three or four yards to go. Third down, there's Gravel to put his head down. Does he make it? He's, he's tugging, he's pushing. Let's see here. And we're, like I say, we're our angle, we, where we are as a broadcast, you know, we can't not see exactly. And we're just gonna wait, see if they move the chains. A lot of the Ferris players are pointing that it's a first down. Yeah, they do. Yeah, there you go. Johnny McMullen gives us a signal. Now that so, passing play just before that was real interesting. They kept all but two receivers in the block, so he had all the time in the world to get that playoff, and he was still able to get one of the two guys open. A little unsure on the catch, though. Yeah. He bobbled that again. <laughs> I think everybody's holding their breath here in the crowd. We're right in the crowd as well, so we're hearing both sides. So let's see, timeout. Timeout called by the Bears. Time goal. There we go. So 6.48 left for halftime, 7 nothing score, and we're not seeing that shootout as maybe a lot of people predicted, but you know what, I don't mind this. Uh, they're moving the ball, some good uh, lot of drop balls, as you said, and uh, the defenses are taking pride. Yeah, the, the score could be a lot bigger at this point, but both offenses, like you just mentioned, are able to, to move the ball and, and put some first downs together and, and get some nice drives going. So you're seeing success on both sides. No one's giving up a big play, but at the same time, they're, uh, they're still able to move the ball on offense. So it could be, like you said earlier, whoever has the ball last might be the one yeah. coming out with the win here. As we mentioned, uh, the Heck of a Lad Memorial Trophy will be pre presented by Richard Lachance here. He's the convener this season at the end of the game. And uh, the winner hosts the uh, NASA semifinal next Saturday here against the, uh, the high school from Sudbury. And then if that is... Uh, Victorious for the North Bay School, they'll be hosting the Northern uh, Ontario Championship against the Sioux in the following Saturday. So a couple more Saturdays of football possible here at this complex. So if you're planning uh, your weekends, the next two weekends, this would be a good spot to be. And, and both these teams have the potential to go quite far in Yeah. Us. First and 10 for the Trojans after the timeout. Again, there comes a pass. Wide open and so oh, nice play. I give the defense credit there. That was 55, Carter Conlon, on 23, Thomas Hamilton. So that was a good play 
uh, on the Conlon play. He's a short, stubby goaltender, high school hockey player for the Bears, but he likes to play that defense. And he's very physical. And I noticed last week in our game against against the Bears, he's a he's a leader out on that on that defense, vocally and emotionally for that team. Second down for the Trojans. Let's see what they do here. Down by seven. End around to a Joey Davis. Does he get in there? Ah, the far he's knocked down. That the horse collar tackle, number 72. That's Tyler Bilodeau for the uh, Bears. So that could be not a first down. So that was a tough one, but they're, they're going to call that uh, horse tackle, I think. Horse collar, I should say. We'll go right to the one, Terry. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what he calls. Yeah, yeah. Right it could have been out of bounds. It could have been a high tackle. Yeah. It could have been a horse collar. Let's listen to Johnny McDonald here. <laughs> Unnecessary roughness, horse collar, goal, first down to one. There was our call. Never want to be a referee, but <laughs> he, he's done a good job. And they, they're it's safety first, of course, right? So Absolutely. And uh, first and ten, uh, first and goal, actually. The Trojans looking to tie this game. Here in the halfway through the second quarter, Gravel puts his head down. He gets in there. Touchdown. Austin Gravel, 34. In the second quarter. And we're looking for the uh, convert to tie this game. So again, penalties are playing a key role in this in this matchup. Both teams. And to take the extra point is uh, Anthony Scapatura. To make it a 7-7 game. But the snap is important. Here it is. And it's up. And he makes it. So we're tied at 7. And another classic matchup between these two uh, schools. Yep. Never never cease to amaze you how they can play. They can play the gunslinger or they play the grind it out. A couple of possessions for both teams. We've got a couple of stops and a couple of scores. Yep. So it's gone back and forth. Yeah. Again, the sun's trying to break out, a little break in the clouds, and that's that's perfect, kind of warming up a little situation. And lots of body heat in North Bay right here. Ryan, we don't need to go anywhere else. Oh, we're, we're in not. between the, our nice scaffolding with the Kojiko sign. The guys upstairs are not freezing too bad. They think they're okay in the truck. They're warm. Joey and uh, Steve calling the shots inside. They're they're bragging how nice it is. <laughs> Still waiting for the coffee. <laughs> Would be nice, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get them next time. Here we go for the kickoff. I'll tell you, number one crew right here, boys, at TV Kojiko, if you want to volunteer and get some uh, intimate uh, relations with the cameras and your microphones, these are the guys that help you out. Nothing but the best right here. There's a short kickoff, Scapachura. They're, they're respecting way too much, but Poeta is going to let it go. He touched it. He better pick it up. He's going to be cornered. He's going to go on the other side. Can he break through here? No, not this, not this time. And they mark it down on the 23, 24 yard line for the Bears. Again, I, I wonder why he wouldn't pick it up and try instead of letting it run out of bounds. Yeah, if I mean, if it does go out of bounds, it's a penalty yeah. on, on the Trojans, but what a fabulous kick to, to drop it right yeah. in that hole, keep it in inbounds, and you know, if he doesn't pick it up there, his, his, his coverage team has a chance to recover that. Yeah. And that would be first down Trojans. So first and 10 for the Bears. And Mark it around the 24 yard line. Five minutes, 50 seconds left to halftime. 7 7 is our score. And all the fans you see are all geared up here at both schools. And of course, the rest of the public. Rayner inside to Gravel, or make that sorry, to Bernard. Andrew. And a short pickup. Andrew was hurt last game, was, didn't play, so he's back from injury. And he had a good final last year as a rookie. And he had a fumble that uh, hurt them last year, and I'm sure he wants to regain that this season. I shouldn't have brought it up. Uh, know the family, but you know what? I, maybe he'll do it this year and uh, get back what they lost last year. Second down. Eight yards. Rainer again. Back to pass. Has uh, Spencer Brooks open. Oh, it's going to be short. Look out. Does he catch it? Yes, he does. Nice job. Number uh, 88. Or is that Gravel? That's Michael Carr, 88. 
Cavell's uh, Gregory's number 86. That took a long time to develop, didn't it? It sure did, and it's a lot like what the Trojans did on their last possession, where they brought everybody in for pass protection and only released the two wide receivers. It's a corner or a, a, a comeback on the far, and then a corner out trying to sneak in behind it. The safety was over top, so he went down below, and just a great job going up for a jump ball, yep. coming down with it. First and 10, remove the yard sticks. The 37 yard line for the Bears. Hand off to Bedard again. And he keeps moving. Wow, off to the 50 yard line. That's close to another first down. Yeah, they're going to move the sticks. Again, I, I think Scholar, if they can grind it out to make the uh, Trojans' defense work, uh, they're in a good position here. Yeah, we talk about the speed of Scholard with those two slot backs, but here's just straight up power yeah, running. Yeah. He just dragged two guys. He got a great push from the O line. Green, just straight go, power on, running there. Mark at about the 49 or so, first and 10 for the Bears. 7 7 tie coming up to the three minute warning. Rainer delayed handoff to uh, Bernard again, only picks up about four on the play. Looked like a little bit of confusion there. The, uh, took long, the, eh? Yeah, the fullback. Um, almost delayed a little bit, Jordan Bodway, and, and after the handoff, he almost looked back as if to say, well, where, where's the ball and where's it going? Yeah. But still, with that great surge by the O-line, picking up four or five yards. Second down, and about six. Seven, seven tie, coming to uh, 325 left, and we'll have a three minute warning, it'll be stop time after that. So plenty of time to score, or get scored upon. Again, inside, Bodway puts his head down, one more to go, and he's knocking people over, what a run. Number 20, Jordan Bodwin. Wow, yeah. it's like the, 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 moose, the bull race is there in Spain, right? There's no confusion <laughs> there. Jordan Bodwin definitely getting the ball. He knew he was getting the ball, and there was nothing stopping him from getting the first down, just <laughs> knocking defenders over. 37-yard line, first to 10. Are they gonna, this will be the uh, last play before a three-minute warning. Lots of movement. Rainer, uh, Spencer Brooks open. He makes the grab, no! Oh, nice tackle. Good defense there by 23. That was Thomas Hamilton. You were pointing out things to me. What were you telling me? Well, it's the, it's the same formation they just tried on their last play, where they put both slots to the same side. One stays in the pass block. They only release two guys, so you've got 10 guys in protection, and it's the same route combination, a corner route over top of the, of the hook. And he's trying to get it to the slot doing the corner route. And I think Brooks should have had that one. He'll be kicking himself there. I'm sure another drop pass. Scholar's going to oh. regret later. Direct snap to Brooks again. He's dancing his way, but not, just not much here. When he gets to about the 35-yard line. Third down for the Bears. And let's see what they do here. Well, we got some screamers here today. Look out. Hope they have some earpieces down there. So third down. Let's see what they're gonna do. What do you think? Field goal, they're gonna go for it. Well, they don't have the win now, and this is yeah. interesting, because I noticed when they did the coin toss, Ferris insisted on switching ends. Okay. So they might have been playing a bit of a win. Okay. Well, Rainer is gonna uh, attempt the kick. They got uh, Poeta split out. Now he's running towards the line. Here comes the snap, lots of time. And there it goes. See what kind of drop they get. It's bouncing towards the Bears, so it's picked up by the Trojans. There'll be a flag for no yards. And it's out of bounds at around the uh, 28, 29 yard line. Uh, we'll see what John McDonald says here. Still talking and uh, well, they declined it. Okay, so it's no yards. No yards, gold, declined, first. There you go. Five five is the number. Five five, guys. 
So Carter Conlon was called on that. It's good thanks to John for that. So the ball's at the C27 yard line for the Trojans. It's a 7-7 seven, seven game, 157 left at halftime. Tugas in the shotgun. Gives it to Gravel. Let's see what he does. Conlon again, he's the, uh, he's the man possessed. I think his number is going to be 34 for the whole afternoon, right? 55-34. Yeah, it, it looks like wherever 34 is going, that's where 55 is going to yeah. be as well. That's right. Those two will be matched up. He, he, he'll know his deodorant before the game's over and what he uses <laughs> after she before the game's over as well. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. You get too intimate, I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> I know Joe, Father Joe, is... Uh, pacing up the sidelines here. I can't see him, but he's here somewhere. I know that. He's anxious all the time. Him and his Maple Leafs. There's Gravel. It has some room. He gets one, one tackle. Look out. Look out. He can go up the middle. He got one more to go. Can he go? No. Mason Dominico was the last to grab him, or this would have been a one touchdown score. Yeah, you see there from Austin Gravel, not only does he have the power to break two tackles as he's going through the line, but once he's in open space, he can just break away from the pack. Great speed by Mason to catch him from behind and prevent a touchdown there. Well, that's his training from his track from his father, Kevin. So if he's not in track, he's not going to be part of Kevin's life. But you know what? He can run. No question about that. Just kidding, Kevin. But Mason made the tackle, and that could have saved him seven points because now you have to really dig it in there. You have the 22-yard line as a man down. 71, it's uh, Billado for the Bears, taking a rest. Zachary Clark, I think Oh, sorry, is. I'm yeah. sorry, I read the wrong number. That's okay. 72, instead of 71. <laughs> we, have, we apologize to all the families if we misrepresent some of the kids here because uh, some of these, uh, the lineups are true, but uh, sometimes they do make some lineup changes on us before game time. Again, uh, Ryan, this is a big, I think this is a big score for the Trojans getting some points before halftime because you got to feel the momentum. If uh, the Bears get going, you know they're going to score more than one touchdown. They have to score in their possessions, especially deep down here. Oh, definitely, definitely. And if, if um, West Ferris here can, can pull ahead with whether it be a field goal or a touchdown this close in the red zone, um, they're going to have to feel, or they're going to definitely feel pretty confident yeah. going into half with a lead. Yeah, the wind is picking up. Uh, all of a sudden, so there might be a little frontal system coming in uh, here this in the second half. So that could change too if the weather does pick up. Definitely. Let's hope that uh, it's nothing too serious for Zachary Clark as he's being helped yeah. off the field. So first and ten for the uh, Trojans. Here, late stages of the first half, seven-seven score. Try to go ahead. Call and track 29, Austin Gravel 34 in the backfield. Hanniger 86 is wide to the near side towards us. And uh, 17, that's Davis on the far side. Calling the signals, now yelling, doing the Peyton Manning imitation, all that jazz. Just get the ball snap, son, let's go. Now he's going to call timeout. Like, exactly like Peyton Manning, right? <laughs> Just reading the defense, <laughs> yeah, all the verbiage, all the signals, and then look out, timeout. Yeah, well, I, I know Jason Ferreira, and, and he does a great job with his offense where before the snap, they know exactly who they're trying to get the ball to and, and what they're trying to take advantage of with the defense. So you see a lot of that, you know, up onto the line, back off the line, see how the defense is aligned, what kind of coverage do we think we're going to get, and if it's not uh, not the play that they want designed for that defense, take the timeout. You have two of them. You're this far into the to the red zone and this close into the uh, to the end of the, the second second quarter that uh, you don't want to make a mistake at this point. Yeah, no question about it. These two teams have dominated, as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, uh, football in North Bay for a number of years, except for the odd Whitfield win here and there. We have to mention that in once in a while. <laughs> the last minute game there at Whitfield uh, Field with no time remaining. Yes, there was time, no time, but you know, you'll take it, right? Uh, we'll take it every time. <laughs> we'll Absolutely. Take it every <laughs> we'll take it every time. Yeah, that had a little bit of controversy on that one. I remember <laughs> watching that game. That was That's for the ages. Anyway, let's move on. We're in 2011. <laughs> We're in a better situation here, field-wise. And the, uh, the, the turf is unbelievable. Just a presentation. Hope you're enjoying it on TV. Could you go here today? Tukas out to Davis. And right there on the spot, Mason Dominico on with the tackle. He saved that touchdown run by Gravel, and he saved another one there on Davis. Yeah, and that's just a real simple hitch pass where 
what they're hoping is that the cornerback at the snap of the ball is going to drop into a deep third coverage and give that receiver some space to do something fun. But uh, great job by standing your ground out there on an island all by yourself and making a, a really good open field tackle for little no, to no gain. Clock's running here, Ryan. The second down in about 10, so they need points here. I think, I'm not sure if they use both their timeouts or not. Now there's one for sure. Again, back to pass. Going out, man's wide open! Oh, no, he dropped the ball! He dropped the ball, Hamilton! Again, can you believe that? Oh, what's going on here today? What a heartbreak. He wow. must be killing himself right now. <laughs> wow. We're highlight real drops here today on both teams. Yeah, he's smacking himself in the helmet. He just feels awful about that one. Wow, here we go. Third down. Now you, what do you do? Well, uh, you don't want to <laughs> not come away with uh, with some points here. Yeah. But I don't I don't see a kicking team coming out. No, timeout. So now it's a decision here. What do they timeout? You need some sort of points. You think 32 seconds? I mean, really going for seven is a big gamble. I, I think you get the one or three and try to force the other team to come back at you. Yeah, any, any chance you have to take a lead, you, you definitely don't want to pass that up. Yeah, that's for sure. So another timeout with 32 seconds left and a 7-7 game. And the crowd is uh, 10 deep. We can't get out of here if we want to go to the bathroom break here in Ontario. We've only, we've got fencing, we got scaffolding, and we got about 500 people. Jammed, and I, I don't think we can really make a run for it, Ryan. What do you think? Our best is there, bets to is go there over a potty? The over the fence? No, I can't make it. I'm too big. <laughs> yeah, there's no porta potties in that site, so we're in trouble. Well, they, they had quite a few. I mean, it's such a beautiful facility yeah. here at the Omashal Complex. Yeah. And uh, I was here for the opening day. I had um, my little one was doing one of the house league soccer games yeah. that was taking place that day, and they did just a great job of making sure that the facilities were up and running. They had a barbecue going that day. They had plenty of porta, yeah, you know, porta johns everywhere. Here we go, third down. They're gonna go for the field goal. Scapatura, uh, Jake Tugas will hold it. There it is, it's up, and it is. It's good! He makes it in for the for the three-pointer. So it's 10-7 with 28 seconds left. And that was a good gamble. I think you have to get points, and now you gotta force the opposition to counteract that. Yeah, it's a heartbreak at any time that uh, you have ball, the, the football dropped in the end zone for a touchdown, yeah. and you have to come away with a field goal from it, but just no way you can pass up points yeah. this close to the half. And the weather's changing too, right? You Absolutely. can You can feel it. Uh, the wind's really picked up here in the uh, late stages, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know too if uh, when they asked for the kickoff to be switched at the beginning of the game, if they took that win. There wasn't much of a breeze then, but uh, there definitely is now. That could play a bit of a role here because now the Bears are going to have to go into the wind in the second quarter if they want to put the ball in the air. And there's a kick, short kick by the Trojans. Try to keep it away from Brooks. He gets it on the bounce. What can he do with 25 seconds? Exciting player, I'll tell you. He can dance. Look at him go down the sidelines. He's still up on his feet, and he gets up to the 50-yard line. That's dangerous. With 20 seconds, you don't know what could happen. But number nine, Spencer Brooks. Yeah, and here's Spencer again, breaking tackles. You think of him as a speed guy. He's a track guy. But you, you, just by getting to him and wrapping him up, he's not going to go down without a fight. He's going to yep. drag in. He's going to fight for every extra yard he can get. So what the Bears do with 20.6 seconds left, and the ball is at the 49-yard line. Do they have a couple of tricks here to get close to a field goal range or, or, or play they can, uh, with Poeta and Brooks on the, on the sides, well, sidelines? We've, we've seen twice they like that, uh, that formation with the two slot backs on the same side, maximum protection, and try and sneak one of the slots out to the corner. Not seeing it here. We'll see if they go to the air or just try to pound it out. Here we go. Delay inside for the uh, tackle. No, he gets away one. Goes to the outside, never gives up this kid. It finally tossed out at the 45 with 10 seconds left. Oh, great play call. And uh, they're looking for a big play there. Do they have one or two left here? Great catch. Great catch there. And like we just said, fighting for every yard he can get. Making sure he gets out of bounds so that once the yeah. play is called back in, the clock doesn't start giving them a little bit of extra time. Yeah. 
definitely give him time for at least one more play, maybe even two now that yeah. he's able to get the clock stopped. We'll see how long it takes to develop. They have to get, get, get down on the ground to so get a chance for the field goal unit. They're going to big shotgun, Rainer. He's going to quick push it, quick kick. It's going to be a live ball, but Hamilton's there for West Ferris, and Brooks is going to package him up. And the clock will stop. No, the game, will, the halftime will be uh, at 0-0. But that was an interesting call on that quick. What do you think? Well, They were ready for it, weren't they? Yeah, it looked like they were. And this is something that we tried with the Wild last yeah. year. We had yeah. it in. Um, I think we, we called it once or twice. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is if you have any of your running backs or your slot backs behind the punter, yeah. or the quarterback in this case, when he kicks it, they're live. They're on side. So if, the, if Ferris doesn't actually field that cleanly, any one of those guys can get downfield and recover it just like a pass. Now, unfortunately, the guy who was first to the ball was the wide receiver. So he wouldn't have been able to catch that anyway, but at least he's there to make a tackle. So it's 10-7, uh, their score. Bowdoin uh, started off the scoring in the first quarter. It's 7-0 with the convert. And uh, the Trojans tied up with Gravel's run. And, of course, the field goal with Anthony Scapertura with 28 seconds left makes it 10-7. Very defensive game here so far uh, after two big offenses scoring all those big points here in the uh, first half. What do you think? Quick comment. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's not a huge scoring game just yet, but both teams have shown that they can move the ball. Both teams have shown that they can get in the end zone, drop passes, penalties, have taken away several touchdowns now. So it'll be see, interesting to see if they can clean that up and, and get their offenses with more points on the board. Okay, Ryan, we'll take a break. It's halftime. It's West First 10, St. Joe's Scholar at 7. Second half is coming up next.